Today we're going to make a new vacuum cleaner, right? Hello. I'm scared. Hi. So this is my old shop vacuum, and it sucks pretty well. <laughs> um, and then a few years ago, I got a Clearview separator for it. Okay. Okay. This telescope does not work. It's not Can you see anything? Yeah. And the way this works, or the way it's supposed to work, is you sort of strap the two tanks together and you run hoses between the two, and then this this helps get a lot of the material out of the vacuum stream before it gets to the filter in the, in the vacuum. But what I found with this is it was really hard to move around because the, the wheels and the way this is set up was, was never meant to have a tank strapped to the side of it, and it was always falling off, getting caught on things. It was It was, it makes it not really a mobile vacuum cleaner. And it always seemed like a little bit of overkill that there's two tanks. And would there be a way to just get rid of this tank and have the suction work with the cyclone and everything just goes into this bucket? <laughs> so I've always wanted to just have the blower attached to the top of the cyclone. So what I, I want to do is just get rid of this vacuum and get a new blower and see if I can just make my own shop vac. <laughs> so that, that's what this is going to be about. I started by coming up with a quick model on the computer of what I wanted to do. It wasn't really complete, but it showed the basic idea and the basic parts that I wanted to make. There'd be sort of a collar at the top to hold the motor blower and the top of the cyclone and a circle cut in the bottom to hold the bucket. And the bucket will just sit in that circle and stick through a little ways down below the plane of the piece of wood. So I needed that circle to be very precise. So I actually, I cut it and then recut it a few times, kind of testing the bucket in the circle to where I could have the bucket stick down below the piece of plywood a few inches. I had kind of figured that with this project, I'd build a prototype first. So that's what I started out thinking this would be. So I'm, I'm not really trying to make it beautiful at this point. I'm just trying to see if I can get something that will work. And I figured at some future date, I'd make a, a version two. So this is the collar that will go towards the top and it'll clamp around the cyclone. I have two bolts, one on each side, that will hold the two pieces together. So I can drill a hole on the outer piece then use those holes that I drilled on the drill press to drill the holes on the back piece. And I can drill those with a hand drill, using the first two holes as, as a guide. Now you can see how the bolts go into those new holes and will hold those two pieces together. We can finally see how this clamps around the cyclone. And it seemed to hold the cyclone without being too big or too small. Next was to mount the blower motor to this piece of plywood that I've just just made. I'd hoped to find one of these blower motors used or for free somewhere. It seems like there should be a lot of them out there, but I didn't have much luck with that, so I just ordered a new one, kind of guessing at what I thought I would need. So the blower motor has three spots for bolts to mount it. I haven't seen how this blower gets mounted normally so I'm coming up with my own mounting method. <laughs> what I thought I would do is run some longer bolts from the plywood up to the mounting spots on the blower and this will sort of clamp the blower down to the cyclone but the heavy motor will be held in place with the plywood and not with the plastic of the cyclone. My piece of plywood was a little bit short, so I added a little extra length to reach the back panel. 
I am excited to announce another Maker Mob challenge. Starting on May 1st, there will be a free six week scrap wood challenge in which each week a different Maker's Mob maker will make a project using only things within the shop so that we can stay home, stay in the shop, and stay safe. My plan at the moment is to do a mallet out of scrap pieces from the drawer build, and that will be coming up in a few weeks. I will put a link in the description below. It should be a lot of fun. Now what I need to make are the side supports that will go from the bottom piece with the hole for the bucket to the back panel piece, sort of the, the main spine of the whole setup. And I had some leftover drawer bottoms from the storage unit project that hadn't really worked as drawer bottoms as they were a little bit too thick. So I glued a bunch of those together to make a thicker piece of plywood. And once that was glued together, I could trim up the sides. And I went to cut it in half to make the two pieces I needed and it wouldn't fit in my sled. So I sanded off the corners and sanded up the sides a little bit. And once I did this, it would fit in the sled. And I could cut it in half and get two triangles. I drilled some holes in these pieces and you'll see how they work with the other pieces here. They'll sit on the bottom piece and on either side of the back panel. I think when I was modeling this in the computer, I was thinking I would be using three quarter inch plywood, but I've ended up scrounging other pieces with other dimensions and kind of having to make this work. <laughs> I can attach all the screws. and see if the cyclone's gonna fit. It looks like it's about right. For this to work, I need to have the wheels on the bottom so the bucket will have some space to hang into. I added a piece of blocking along the back to give the wheels a little more width and something to attach to. I pulled these wheels off of something and I can't remember what. They're not new, they've been in the shop for a little while, but I'm not sure what I got them from. This whole project is finding pieces to make the project out of. <laughs> I can add the front wheel in the same way, and it seems to roll around. I can put the cyclone in, and it seems like it fits. As I was actually making this physically now, I could see that where the air comes out of the blower was going to need a spot on the back panel to go through. So I cut a hole in the back panel and I found sort of a cone shaped adapter I could use for the blower part of the blower. And I noticed the bucket wasn't quite seating itself all the way in the circle. So I trimmed off a little bit of my plywood triangles. I had to trim a little bit of my cone adapter piece to get it to fit over the blower. So you can see how that's going to work. I had dropped this piece of plastic and it had cracked and I had hoped that that would be enough of a relief cut that a hose clamp would tighten it around the blower. But this didn't really work. <laughs> I'll need to cut a wider relief cut into the plastic at some point. I can wire up the switch, which is fairly straightforward. There doesn't seem to be a ground wire coming off of the motor, and I don't know if there's a spot on the motor that you can ground it with, as there's a ground wire coming from the cord to the outlet. But for right now, it's not grounded. I also noticed that the front wheel wasn't turning quite right. When I looked at this closer, I could see that the, the wheel was hitting the bucket when it turns. So I needed to move the wheel away from the bucket just a little bit. So I added a piece of blocking and this made the wheel work. And my little cone adapter wasn't really staying in place. So I added a L bracket. Is it beautiful yet? <laughs> I got a filter bag, which is really meant more for a dust collection blower. 
So this doesn't really blow enough air to blow the bag up, but it functions as a filter. And the vacuum definitely works. It works better than my old shop vac ever worked. I was excited to have a vacuum in the shop again. So I cleaned up a lot of the dust that's been sitting around for a few months as I've not had a vacuum. I cleaned up the lathe area a little bit. It seems about as loud as the old shop vac was. In fact, it might even be a, a little bit quieter. You can see the dust going into the cyclone. I did have an issue with the really fluffy lathe sawdust curls that those would get stuck in the cyclone. You can kind of see them there in the cone. I really wanted to know how much material the cyclone was collecting and how much was getting into the filter bag. So after filling the bucket about half full, there's just a little bit of material in the filter bag. There's a little bit of fine material around the opening, and then there's some slightly bigger particles inside the bag. Probably the biggest issue with this design at the moment is that you can't empty the bucket without taking everything apart, which really doesn't make sense. So I think in version two, I'm going to have to come up with a way that you can easily empty the bucket without taking everything apart. Okay, so I have it back together again. Um, it's, it's actually not too hard to empty the bucket, but it would be nice to have some kind of system that would let me um, empty this a lot quicker. One, one thought I had is to put a hinge in the back piece so that the sort of the top can sort of fold away and open the lid so the bucket can come out. And that would sort of hold all of this together while you're cleaning the bucket. I sort of want to use this for a little while to find things that I want to do to it. Like it, like it might be nice to have a little handle out here like I have at the top. It would be nice to have places to hang some of the stuff that goes with the vacuum, like the different ends for the hose. I definitely want to make a version two at some point. <laughs> Then put this thing on. And then we put the frisbee on. And then we put this on. <laughs> okay. No, we first screw that on. Well, no, we screw all the things six on. six more screws? We screw all the stuff at the same time. Mm. No, we screw. No, no, you see, there's no screws to the way. So this one. Thanks for watching.